Hi everyone and welcome to my island. This is what 600 hours of Animal Crossing looks like. And of course I spent a lot of time destroying, rebuilding, and maybe out of those 600 hours I spent 200 on Nukazon, which is a really amazing system by the way if you ever have trouble finding items. Originally my island didn't have a theme. It was more of a poor versus rich people thing. My villagers lived in a cardboard box, cardboard bed, and my house was all fancy on the highest hill. And then as I built more and more, I noticed that my theme was basically a travel diary. And I've been to a lot of countries in 2019, of course, before the pandemic. And I guess in a way my town is modeled after the places I've seen. And that's to say that I'm not trying to build an accurate replica of these places. You'll see that a lot of these setups are definitely more of a mix of cultures rather than trying to be a perfect representation of the culture. So this is my travel diary island and I'm going to give you a grand tour. Now first things first, I have this very cliche Shibuya entrance. Not an original idea. For those of you who have been following Animal Crossing community, you see that a lot of people have been looking for the QR codes to this. Um, but I do love Japan, and I do think it's the best use of the small space between the airport and the plaza. I did end up making my own street towel because the original wasn't very easy to find. And I'm actually pretty proud of my mailbox placement here because I haven't seen anyone do that yet. So we got a ramen booth here, Sucker's Takayaki, which I found so funny I could not not have this pattern. I got a cigarette store, um, of course a matcha stand. My island can't exist without matcha shop. Um, if you ever see my travel photos, you'll know that I've tried everything matcha that exists because I just love matcha that much. The one thing I would not recommend anyone trying, it's uh, matcha beer. Yeah, uh, it just doesn't taste right. Uh, it tastes as bad as it sounds. So over here we got a tiny alleyway. I like it because you really have to squeeze through it and it makes the perfect hiding spot. Uh, one of my friends says that this is his favorite part of the island because he just he laughed his ass off when he saw that I placed a toilet <laughs> in the hidden corner. Uh, you can't really see it with the tree in the way, but yeah, it's that white thing. Now we'll come up here to my second floor, PC Bay. Very proud of this, 100% original idea. Uh, despite how popular they are, I'm pretty surprised I haven't seen anyone do one yet. And for those who don't know what PC Bang in white people terms is an internet cafe, basically extinct in western countries, still very popular in Korea and some Asian countries. Uh, I recently wrote a paper on PC Bangs, so I can tell you a lot about them. The whole concept of internet cafes actually started in South Korea during the Asian economic crisis of 1997. So a lot of people were struggling financially and they were having easy access to a computer really helped any tech companies grow. And not a lot of people know this, but I think today, globally, uh, Korea is leading in technology. And they're so far advanced when it comes to like 5G, AR technology. It's really quite impressive. And um, that's all thanks to the PC bang boom. Now today, PC banks are mostly used for gaming, and I spent my share of time in PC banks in Korea and Australia. Very fun going to as a girl because, uh, yeah, the only girls that ever go to PC banks are the ones that are accompanying the boyfriends. If I had more pattern slots, I'd definitely be customizing the screens to include some games like Overwatch because that's like the only thing I play these days. Uh, but yeah, no pattern space. Moving on, uh, over on this side, we have a mini office. This is modeled after the various jobs I've had at Facebook and Google. Big fan of their height adjustable tables that looks really just like this. Uh, they give you a work laptop monitor, basically any other technical gear you need. They're very chill places to work at and we're allowed to communicate with memes. So you can see a fair share of those here. And I've said this a hundred times, but yes, at one point I did in fact work at YouTube headquarters. And chances are if you ever sent a support request in 2016, um, I probably worked on your case. Now the bridge. I saw some people making these really long paths, which isn't very appealing, but I guess the point of it is if you look at it from a certain angle, it looks curved. So if you add some fences to it, you get this really cool long bridge. 
And that's the thing with a lot of photos at Animal Crossing, right? Like, they really only look good from exactly one angle. And I'm pretty happy with this bridge, but unfortunately it isn't modeled after anything. I added some vendor stands here selling jewelry because in some places like Hong Kong and other Asian countries, you have a lot of these aunties selling accessories on the street. And same with this uh, generic book stand here, selling magazines, uh, newspapers, and sorts. Here we got a Vienna inspired center. Kinda cheated here because I didn't go to Europe and I was supposed to study in London for three months. And then the world went on lockdown a week before my flight. So I don't really know what Europe looks like. Uh, there was this very beautiful Vienna inspired photo circulating in AC community with this pattern. So I basically stole it from there. Ironically, the original creator already destroyed that section of our island. But yeah, nothing fancy here. I like the carnival color scheme of these items. Got a little Ferrari station here because Europeans love the cars. I also made a fishing port here. Not modeled after anything, but I did see this really cool Japanese themed island and they have a fishing port in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so I decided to use that, um, the best of the space and make one too. And there is fish that spawns in this spot, so I'm pretty proud that it's functional. I got a food booth here that is modeled after the seaside bakery in Newport Beach. The inside joke here is that one of my good friends always goes to seaside at exactly 2 a.m. It, it has to be 2 a.m. Um, he always gets green Thai tea and ham and cheese croissant. I don't have a croissant pattern, but it is a donut bakery, so this will do. And he would be driving from like LA, Garden Grove, Irvine, doesn't matter. You can always find him here at least once a week at exactly 2 a.m. Now, uh, there are a lot of paths that connect on my island, so I'm trying not to repeat these areas. Uh, so we're just going to go back to the residence hall and start from there. Behind the residence hall is Matilda's house. I really wanted her because she's a kangaroo and there's a song, I think it's after a play, uh, famous in Australian culture, it's called Matilda. So I understood that reference and I wanted to keep that as a memento on my island. We got a rose garden in the back, which went through a lot of revisions and ultimately I just kept it simple. Like I got the rose bed DIY before I even knew roses existed in the game. Um, so roses were a big thing in my town and it was pretty hard getting rid of them so I just decided to keep that one section. Across the bridge is a residential area that I'll go over later. For now we're just going to start from the bottom. Below the residence hall is uh, kind of an extension of the plaza. Just a little relaxing area inspired by the shared economy. And as you can see, uh, rentable scooters, bicycles, yeah, the shared economy, it's, it's been a reoccurring topic that always seems to come back to me during business school. And I think it's quite interesting how business these days is moving towards this shared and gig economy, you know, just putting value back in individuals over corporation. It's wonderful news for artists like me and probably most of you who are trying to build a career off this new framework. Now down here is an Australian inspired area. You're probably thinking, well, there's nothing particularly Australian about it. Yeah, I, I spent a lot of time thinking about this area and there's not like a can of Vegemite or kangaroo statue that I could use to make this area more Australian. I do have this duck, which is uh, pretending to be a magpie. I think it's pretty darn close to a magpie and that's uh, very Australian to me. This area is mostly based off the culture of Australia being a very laid-back country. The main city is hooked the coastline, so I put it on the beach and the beaches there are so incredibly beautiful. And the waters there is, are just clear blue. Now in the back I have a little concert area which is representing the Sydney Opera House. It's honestly the best way I could think of to represent Sydney. Um, there's this very interesting backstory behind the Opera House. It was basically a failed and impossible project to be frank. Uh, I do recommend seeing a show there when you can. It's a very lovely experience. And I have snowflakes as the background because, well, God bless this upside down island uh, that has opposite seasons, right? Snowflakes and beach, you know, best way to represent Australia. 
I have a deck here just for chilling. It's kind of inspired by coastside restaurants like Kirk's in Mornington and Esplanade in St. Kilda. Very good restaurants, by the way. Another original idea I haven't seen anyone do yet. These are my Brighton bathing boxes, which is Melbourne's most iconic landmark. And let me just say though, it really is the most boring thing about Melbourne. I mean, it's happening if you're an Instagrammer, but that's basically it. It's just a bunch of tourists trying to show off and occasionally some locals sitting down reading a book. It's pretty far from CBD if you don't have a car. Frankly, it's not really worth the commute. There's just so much more to love about Melbourne. It's very suburban, so it doesn't make a very ideal tourist city, but it's a very ideal place to live. Um, so clearly if you ask where I stand on the Sydney versus Melbourne war, my vote absolutely goes to Melbourne. I did not quite enjoy my time in Sydney when I was there because of mainly the weather. It was pretty scary to be frank. Very bipolar. I, I was just caught in a very bad thunderstorm. Uh, there's always traffic. Public transportation is always delayed and it's just it's always so busy 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 and I just I prefer a relaxed environment. And Melbourne is, in fact, my favorite place in the world. It's right the best city in the world. And I have absolutely been making efforts to work and move to Australia. But it's not likely to happen. Um, anyways, yeah, it's my dream to live in Australia. Wonderful place. Up here is my rainbow flower garden. I cannot and I really cannot even tell you how many times I've dug up all my flowers and replanted them. I mean I must have spent somewhere around a total of 40 to 50 hours just reorganizing my flowers alone. And I do have a transparent pattern laid out now so that they don't overgrow. Frankly this area is kind of incomplete. It's basically if I get any more ideas or when new updates come in I have the spot to decorate. But until then, it's just a chill place for the pond. Alright, so now we're entering the C area, which stands for Southeast Asia. And to be fair, I've only been to Singapore, but I've done quite a number of projects based in Thailand. Um, obviously, Taiwan, Japan, not a part of C, but this night market is representing them as well. The night markets are such a fun experience, and unfortunately, it's not the same experience as the fake ones they hold in America. Heck, even the night markets in New Zealand, uh, those are pretty amazing. The food in Asia, definitely a lot better too. So we got a sushi stand here, There's some tea, ramen, merchandise. You know, you can't forget about the tacky merchandise made in China. And the person who made these food patterns, oh, they're a freaking god. Probably the best pattern designer I've seen that's not from Japan. And the seating area is modeled after Hong Kong. And they have those tacky plastic blue and red chairs and flimsy tables uh, with the white plastic coverings on it. Uh, there's a Singaporean joke here, which I hope people caught. And that's the tissue paper. Uh, I think it's pretty hilarious that Singaporeans use a pack of tissue paper to clean tables and then they just walk away. And they respect that. Like, if you try doing that in any other country, no one's going to care. In fact, they'll probably hate you for it. Uh, so there's my little culture shock and it's uh, now a hidden joke on my island. Nothing fancy up here. I kind of just wanted a place to place all the moon chairs and rare flowers. I got this giant teddy from one of my friends who could craft it. Uh, it's such a sweet gift, so I, it gets a little place here. Next is my Hyacinth farm. I basically made my money on Nookas on selling Hyacinth lamps because everyone wanted them and they were so expensive. They were going for 4-5 to five NMT each, but they're pretty valuable now. Very easy to grow. In fact, they breed way too much, so if you or you know anyone who needs some purple hyacinths, just let me know. I got a lot to spare. This is probably the only area that stayed in its original state back when I lived was Hobo and Rich People themed. So it's not really modeled after any place I traveled, it's just a fancy resort. If anything, maybe Mexico. I do go to Los Cabos every other year, um, all inclusive, drinks every day, all day. Um, so there's my tiki bar. I got some vibe and music and a little massage deck. 
And if you haven't noticed by now, I do have Koroks hidden around my island. So if you ever do visit, do let me know how many you can find. There's a total of 50. Uh, some are hidden under objects, but I do place them in a way where you'll be able to see them without moving the objects. Because if I did that, that would be pretty unfair. Um, a lot of them are just hidden in a way where you have to rotate the camera at a certain angle. Now everyone's got to have a Japanese garden, right? So I tried to make this a shrine uh, with the hand wash station here. And there's a gun for the bell, the ema plaques. Gladys House makes a pretty good shrine. There's a Zen garden in the back. A little outdoor onsen area. Onsens are my favorite thing about Japan, so I have to have that there. Uh, I have the elaborate kimono and katana set here. They're just for display. Uh, tailor shop here in the back and all the designs displayed are the ones I made. I got an Anna from Overwatch cosplay, Erica from Digimon Cyber Sleuth. I'm not a great designer and I'll probably spend some more time coming up with better designs now that I'm done designing the island. We are now going to go out this way and we have this area that's only accessible by ladder. So uh, when you do come through the dream suite, make sure you do pick up a ladder that I leave behind if you want to assess all the areas. Um, this is the campsite. I got a little dog park here and there's a table to enjoy the view. A little forced perspective. It was such a trend um, back in the early days. So I made a very small one here just because I really like the car models and I wanted to use those. There's a little tree with the picnic to complete the Japanese theme. You see there's a little core up there too. And that's my campsite. We are now entering the European section of my island. Now again, I never made it to Europe, so it's, it was just so sad. I had everything planned out. Like I had my dates and my routes planned to go through Scotland, Ireland, Paris, Amsterdam, Brussels. So it's, this area is just all based off the pictures I've seen from the research I did. This is my Amsterdam and Paris inspired cafe. A lot of their photos are of bikes crossing the bridge and beautiful cafes on those bridges overlooking the river. So that's why I made this riverside cafe with the bridge. Now, forgive my ignorance, but I made this section a mix of Europe and Latin American culture because I haven't been to these places or studied them at all. I don't really know much about them, but this is the one culture I'm lacking so I decided to include that on my island. I always had this ice-themed party deck on my island. I just decided to make it match the Spanish tiles. I have the infamous infinity pool, just like everyone else here. And this area is modeled after Santorini. I'm a fan of the white and blue theme. I have a bunch of shops selling clothing, pottery, dowel horse representing Sweden. And on the ground level, skull masks, which I believe are supposed to be for the Day of the Dead. I know it's a Mexican tradition, not sure about Spain. Again, I apologize for my ignorance. Um, there's a bookstore because Europeans love reading. I really applaud their dedication and respect to literature. This is overall a playing field for people to enjoy. The secret beach is decorated for Red's mischievous arrival. There's a bonfire, soccer field because Europeans and Latin Americans love their soccer or football to be politically correct. And I'm using the Moe statue to represent the Eastern Island of Chile. We got a little hidden path here that will bring us back to the main road. This is obviously my little orchard. It's the only place on my island where I have fruit trees. Uh, it's kind of useless, which is why I built that secret path to make it more exciting. So now we're on the other side of the river from Town Hall, where half of my villagers live. There's a mini theater slash entertainment deck here, which is what I had to do as a filmmaker to represent my passion and interests. I have Meringue, Whitney, Wolfgang, Savannah. They all conveniently have houses that match, so they all get placed in this area. I just love how Savannah has this zebra springy ride that matches her, so I gave her a springy ride collection. Now I'm going to show you the other side of the island, so we're going to have to cut through Vienna again. 
Uh, I did not want to be one of those people who put all the rocks in one place, but eventually I did. Uh, I tried making it a spiral, but I kept letting one spot off, uh, so I just left it like that because I was just tired. Uh, this area is to make it a more natural-like area because I felt like everyone was doing some nature theme and I was the only one committing mass deforestation. <laughs> so here's me rep uh, respecting my trees. And as you can see, I did the tree hack a lot in this area where it's just hanging off the edge without, uh, without the space in between. I have a secret path here and it goes around the back and you can cut through Vienna from here. I love this fertilizer pattern by the way, definitely one of my favorites, absolute genius use of the cushions. This hidden path has multiple exits, from this end we can go left towards the beach or up the ramp to the museum. So let's go to the museum, and on the right is the Finney pool area that I showed you earlier, if we keep going to the right we'll be back in Europe, if we go down there's Vienna. So. Here to the left, and this again is just a nice forest to represent nature. Um, there's a nice hidden forest reading area here. You can jump uh, to other platforms here if you like. It just takes us back to the rock garden. If we go down the ramp, we are now by the beach. And I decided to turn this corner of the beach into a gym slash recreational area. You can play ping pong and pool out there, or yoga on the beach, weightlifting here, and some complimentary sport drinks. Behind the climbing wall is a path that goes back to the hidden path. Uh, we're not going to go all the way back. This is my greenhouse area, and the flowers are arranged based off the DIY. So these flowers are all used to construct that flower wagon. And the ones back at the rock garden here uh, were for other flower accessories. And this secret path also loops back to the greenhouse like this. Yep, a little tight corner. So yep, yeah, that's the greenhouse. I definitely had friends who had the exact same idea here. All these white lamps are representing LACMA. That's the LA County Museum of Art. Very famous museum where um, there's lights and every Californian has Instagrammed that. Funny enough, I have never been there because I do not have friends and I do not have friends that will take pictures for me. <laughs> so this, um, this area was originally not themed, but I think subconsciously I made it California. We got our very patriotic beach chairs and rainbowy beach towels for a gay pride. I made this rock kind of just a beach shack that sells surfboards, swimsuits, and other beachwear. I like to keep the wetsuits here so I can just grab one and dive into the ocean when I want to go surfing for sea creatures. Let's see, Shep lives over here and I think his house is very suitable for the beach life so he's got that chill lifestyle here all to himself. Now I'm going to show you inside the spa house. And I just love spas, so my travel diary isn't complete without one. And this spa house is just a mashup between the Japanese onsens and Korean spas. Alright, so this is our spa house. First room is the reception slash changing room. We got lockers, changing booths, a scale and all. And at these spas, the girls usually wear pink, boys wear blue. So I got the slippers for them to change into a little vanity area to dry their hair. I have this uh, honestly incomplete set of kimonos, yukatas, and other of its kind just as a display. There's a similar setup at the onsen on Odaiba in Tokyo. So that's where I took the inspiration from. This is the onsen room. It's just a mashup of a bunch of different types of pools. Usually they have special pools that are made from like tea leaves or ginger, something horrible. And the most basic ones, they have like an ice pool and a hot pool. A little sh Japanese shower theme for washing yourself out. Always shower before entering the pools. Now for the room at the top, it's kind of an extension of the changing room. We have sinks for guests to brush their teeth, wash their face, 
And usually in the Korean spas, they have chairs by the pools for you to relax. So that's where this idea came from. And also a couple more showers in the back. This one definitely more Korean themed because they don't always have sit down showers. Um, yep, that's that. The room on the left is a sauna room. Pretty straightforward, nothing impressive. Included a shower to cool off, um, some towels, a telephone in case of emergency. If I had more rooms, I'd definitely make more um, of the Korean spa rooms that they have, like a salt room or an ice room. But, you know, this is all we got. Just a couple of rooms. Now, upstairs is a sleeping room. In the Korean spas, they usually have a designated area for you to sleep or socialize quietly. Usually it's out in the open with the heat floor by a small cafe and a quiet TV. Sometimes it's in a private dark room, kind of isolated from everywhere else. This room is a mix of all that. As you can see, there's a kotatsu futons and some space heaters to keep everyone warm. Then at the bottom we got a cafe. Now there's always a cafe or food court at these spas and food is usually decent, always affordable. Not the same situation in the US though of course. Um, in the US the food at the spa it's always expensive. Not the same thrilling experience. Uh, I also threw in all the posters on the back wall. And these are all the villagers I have and used to have. Definitely bought most of these off Nukazan because my villagers just don't like me that much. Um, there's a little wash basin because in Japan, there's usually a hidden hand washing station for customers at the restaurants. So yeah, and that completes my spa house. I hope you enjoyed that. So we've basically covered the entire island now. We're going to be making our way to my house, if you care to see it. Um, honestly, I didn't put that much effort into decorating my house. I feel like the fun of New Horizons was all about decorating the island and not inside the house. So down here we got just a nice bamboo themed resting area. As you can see, my nooks is disguised as a 7-Eleven. I absolutely enjoyed buying onigiris and lemon sour beers on the way back to my airbnb every night so that's my kudos to 7-eleven now here we got a little arcade shop because japan is not complete without an arcade definitely the friends i traveled with to japan they love these crane games and game shops so kind of had to include that in my town and my house is hidden in between the somewhat of an alleyway behind nooks and it connects to the office area because, you know, work-life balance, right? <laughs> and that's the tiny little Hawaiian area, just for a relaxing view. And up here, you can climb into this area, but it's just trees and bushes. And on the other side is the spa house. And that's the area surrounding my house. Now, let's go inside. My main room is basically a loft slash mini studio. It's decorated with the antique set because I just wanted to be a little unique from everyone else. Um, I don't see a lot of people using the antique set. I can access the wardrobe and the mirror easily here and the bed for the dream suite. Working in the kitchen. Um, yeah, just like a true millennial, right? <laughs> so let's go to the back room. And the back room is a gaming room. We got the switch hooked up to the TV, some board games, piano, and a cooking view of the city. The room on the right is my bathroom. Pretty happy about how much I was able to fit into this tiny room. Very steamy, cozy, and got another tub here because I just love baths that much. I'm pretty happy about um, how this turned out because originally I wanted to be a dark gray themed and White was definitely the last thing I thought, but just like everyone else, I wanted to use that cloud floor, and so I did. Room on the left is kind of guest room, playroom. It's for reading, relaxing, you know, if you just want to have some girl time, do your nails. Uh, we got a loft bed for the lucky person staying in this room. And if you look up, you'll notice that I got my towel flag on a hanging scroll. Not really proud of this being my towel flag, by the way but it's just a lack of pattern space, you know, I just don't really want to dedicate a pattern just for my flag. So I just work with what I have and, you know, this kind of does it. 
bottom floor is my dragonfly bar. Yes, I have a bar in my basement. And this is inspired by the dragonfly bar in Hong Kong. And I integrated the horoscope set uh, to create this fancy bar. It's kind of a hidden gem, but it, you know, it's another place Instagrammers flock to. They serve really good drinks and uh, they have very nice vibes. So if you ever go and you hate people, you hate crowds like I do, uh, it's good to go right when they open. I think they open at 5 p.m. Uh, yeah, so it's very calm and a nice getaway from the crowded LKF area if you're ever in Hong Kong. Lastly, my top floor is my cafe lounge. Now, I did the generic thing of having the ironwood set for my kitchen, but I'm very proud of the fact that I was able to squeeze in the full rattan set on the same floor. So there's two full sets in this room for this very comfy yellow-blue contrast lounge green accent. Very proud of it, yeah. It was the first room I created and I haven't changed it since, which has been about four months now. So it's perfect as it is. And ladies and gents, there you have it. That's my entire Animal Crossing island. Now feel free to visit my island for yourself with the Dream Suite code. Remember to pick up a ladder if you want to have the full experience. Thank you for watching and feel free to leave your comments.